everybody. I am Maureen Golden, and today I am here with John Buck. And John, I asked to speak with you today because having been in the sociocracy ecosystem for a while and experimenting with sociocracy, I've come to delight in how sociocracy can help an organization link up to itself. And I think most people know one of my favorite quotes is from Margaret Wheatley, and it says, if you want to strengthen a system, connect it to itself so it can learn about itself from itself. And I think sociocracy really helps and enables that. But as we're in this new world with greater turbulence and stuff, uh, I'm feeling like there's something more needed. Like it doesn't matter. Like if um, Paul Bourne has this video where he talks about it doesn't matter if you're the most beautiful tree in a forest, it matters about the whole ecosystem. Like it doesn't matter. Like just perfecting ourselves is not enough. It's really like, how do we link up to the larger ecosystem in a way that allows that flow and that linking that sociocracy does internally to happen externally and more on an ecosystem level. And I know you've been doing a lot of work with horizontal organizations. And I know you've given lightly, you've been mentioning that Gerard Edinburgh talks about um, sociocracy and in this external linking way. And with that, like, so just anything in this direction, like that, um, this, what's next, um, that like this sociocracy, if it was like a Porsche, like what else can it do? Like I've seen what it can do a little bit, but like, I know there's more in this and like, what else can it do? Hmm. Well, probably the place to start is I've, I've sent you a copy of, of Gerard's green book. Um, it, it looks like this is a green book. And the title of it is The Organization of Decision Making, No Objection as the Principle of Sociocracy. And it's the book that uh, was still in Dutch and that was just starting to come into English when I first met him. And I helped do a little bit of the translation, mostly as it was done by other people, but I did help clean it up some. And the, the fifth chapter is titled Government. And I'll start off with a picture to show you. Um, I think you can see it. it. What it shows is the neighborhood uh, double linked to a district, a municipal, a region, a national circle and a top circle, you know, like for the UN. And this diagram is almost identical to the diagram that uh, Edwin John, Father Edwin John invented in India and has had more success implementing it than, than Gerard has had. So I'll tell a couple of story, or tell a story about Gerard trying to implement that diagram. Um, <clears throat> they, he was very well connected to um, the, some of the people on the uh, city council in Rotterdam. And in fact, some of them were on his, his, mission, his top circle um, for the Endenberg Electrotechnique. And they managed to get a, a experiment going in an area of Rotterdam that had like 75,000 people, a big neighborhood. <clears throat> and they were doing this diagram. They were having people organize in, in by families of no more than 40 families. Uh, Edwin John says 30 families, but somewhere in there. And then those were, you would get a bunch of those together and they send representatives to a, a next higher unit. Um, he called it a district. There's wards, there's all kinds of names for that. And then that links to the next. And they were building this from the bottom up and uh, there was a young man who was quite bright um, if, uh, in the, the uh, Rotterdam government was leading it, and they were starting to have really good results of you know, people supporting each other. And then one day uh, this man uh, got a job offer to take a job in a different city. It was about double his salary and he took it. And then as soon as he was gone, they shut the whole project down. Sometime around there, I don't know whether it was before or after that experiment, Gerard was invited to give a speech to the upper chamber of the Dutch parliament. He was like, he knows the queen, he knows, you know, he's like very well connected in Dutch society. So he gave the speech and he said, we need to be organizing the Holland into neighborhoods, you know, and going from neighborhoods up. And within two hours after he'd given this speech, two political parties had a news conference in which they said, we oppose that. We don't want to organize. So this idea is a, is a major threat to establish political parties like this, like 
you know, we don't want to do that because then we lose the control and the ability to manipulate people and get what we want. So um, that's kind of like one story about government. Now, there is an experiment that was that's successfully been done in a town in Holland called uh, Utrexo Huvelre. Right, well, I'll get it right. Utrexo Huvelruch. And there is a an academic paper on that by Seward Ram that if you want, I can send you the, the, the link to it. And that that in that, the mayor actually they had troubles and they the mayor actually said we're going to try doing running the city by consent. And they have organized and that, that apparently is a successful implementation where the main line of government was not threatened by by building up from the bottom up. <clears throat> the um, so Edwin John tried implementing the same thing in India and got much farther, uh, but and probably they got the farthest in, in um, the state of Kerala, which is in the southern part of India, and maybe one of the best run parts of India. It's got a really interesting history um, that I, I won't try to go into because there's lots of little fun stories around that. Um, but they... Um, Edwin John in a, a rural part of, of Kerala had federated up to the fourth level. And getting to, let's see, one, two, three, four, yeah, getting to the fifth level would be taking over the state of Kerala. And the political party panicked and said, no, 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 we, we do like this idea. So they passed a law that you said, and it's in effect today, that says <coughs> neighborhoods are supposed to organize themselves. And however, you can't federate up past two levels, what they call the Panjayat level in India. And at that point, then you can't do it anymore. You, ha you can't keep going up. Um, the majority of the politicians at the local level in India are now female because they've come up through this, the system that had originally been for women. And, and so uh, Edwin thinks it's just a matter of time before they take over the state government and maybe we'll see the first um, sociocratic style um, government in a, in a state. Well, it's not there yet, but that's that's been happening. So in the meanwhile, then uh, Edwin came up with the idea of something called a children's parliament, and he was able to federate up there because he was afraid of children. Um, as a kind of a footnote to that, the the this system over it, it's expanded over several states and ended up producing a child prime minister of India. Uh, her name is Swarna Lachmi Ravi. And Swarna Lachmi, I've just been uh, giving her some help doing her master's thesis. She just turned 21 and she's getting her master's thesis. And what's even more incredible is that she's completely blind. Um, and so she's, she's quite something. Um, and her thesis is on trying to build a world children's parliament. And uh, we actually are working on that. We've got uh, uh, children from Africa, Chile, UK, and US now are meeting, and we're they're they're just getting set up. And uh, this it'll be um, that there's a an organization that's an official UN consultant agency, and that will be sponsoring them sometime. We hope next spring to have a true children's summit that some of the kids will be at the UN. So. The, that's we're just that's kind of like you know trying out these experiments and the the I'm working on a book that's related called Governance from Below Can Children Lead the Way, and the interesting thing is is that the children's parliaments in India have not been the tool of any political party. They've been, been their own group, and they've they've have a, a wonderful long story of of straightening out social problems that have been plaguing the, the, the areas that they were working in and the children more effective. <clears throat> um, so that's, that's one story of, of the sociocratic system trying to like poke into how can we, how can we organize our, our world better. <clears throat> There's other things that you should see in this book that um, have to do with networking. So um, the, the, you know that you know that um, 
the top circle in the sociocratic concept is not the traditional board of directors of a corporation, which is totally run by the people who own shares in the company. Um, it is that it, it, the corporation needs to be a free corporation, not owned by anybody, but owning itself, uh, which there's another long story, you know, discussion to be held around that. Uh, I think everybody knows that, that legal people or, or that the corporations are legal people. They have lots of rights that a person has. However, they are legal people who are owned, which means that slavery is legal throughout the world. And the thing called this, the stock market in, in New York is actually a slave auction. Um, so Endenberg is saying, mm, these free legal people ought to own themselves just like you and I own ourselves. And you That's can, Graham Boyd too, right? Um, uh, Graham, well, Graham's aware of sociocracy too. Okay. Yeah, I mean, it's part of, yeah. Fair yeah. Sure. And, okay. and so um, the, how do you do that? Consent decision-making is an uh, important part of that. So who's on the top circle? It should be people who have shares you know, in the company, but they don't get to say, this is what is happening. We have to listen to their voice by consent. But you have all the other aspects of the environment of the company. You know, what's the social infrastructure? What's the financial infrastructure? Maybe somebody who's an expert in um, uh, the uh, aim of the company. Um, if there can be a voice. And, and interestingly, he got that division of who ought to be there from uh, Steiner. If you've ever had anything to do with the Waldorf School, that's where that came from. Um, however, um, since then, as I've been working with it, I'm realizing that there are other aspects, like there needs to be a voice of the environment, somebody who knows about the environment there on your, your top circle and other sorts of things are, are legitimate. It's like what constitutes your environment. Um, so then let's say that rather than just hunting around and finding these people, there are actually organizations running sociocratically that can provide you somebody for your top circle. Then, then you have to be able to um, um, go to them and say, send us somebody, but you have to double link with them. And so this, I'm gonna do this diagram here. You'll see the two little hash marks there on the line going up there. Those little hash marks mean that the, this, this organization right here with the top circle has connections to various sociocracy organizations. And because you can't be in all these places all at one time, you have the top coming down, but the executive director and the elected representative from the top circle can connect up to the next higher level by consent. And so they can, they, it, you start building a, a whole social fabric according to this way of doing things. And you'll notice that, that like this top circle here is connected to more than one sociocratic organization. So you have the basis at the top level of building a network in society. So maybe you have a whole set of organizations or you have a, a super organization that ha is providing uh, economic advisors to a whole bunch of different companies. And they're double linked with that. And so now we're developing a common uh, economic policy for our region. And this is, um, and then we have over here, here's the legal and governmental part. So we have people connecting up there. If you can imagine your company uh, double linked into the policy making group in your county that's setting up business rules and uh, so forth. Um, and so that's a, a networked vision going from the top circle up. And then of course you have your region and it, it connects and, and you end up with the compressed diagram that I started with that you can literally create a network that then runs the world. Um, and it would, be, it would be bottom up and it would be, there's all the things that Edwin John came up with like the ability to immediately recall your representative if you don't like what they're doing and put somebody else up in there creates a more um, agile system than what we currently have where people go into office for all this period of time and you really can't in a practical way pull them back. Um, so that's his idea. The, the, 
the in terms of government, there's only a very few examples where it's actually going, you know, like Kerala and a little bit in Asheville, North Carolina, and, and the, the Dutch thing that I mentioned, where that's actually, you know, uh, happening where there's any kind of consent relationship between the people and the, the government. Um, the, the, and maybe it'll happen in Chile, the people working on the new constitution for Chile, uh, some of them know about sociocracy. So I'm going, yeah, yeah, see what you can come up with. Um, so then along has come the, the concept of uh, collective impact. And as if you add consent to the collective impact concept, then it becomes quite powerful. The example is the Appalachian Food Shed Project that I worked on with Tracy Kunkler, um, where the idea that it started out with a grant from uh, the Agri Department of Agriculture to three uh, universities in Appalachia, West Virginia, and, and uh, Western Virginia, and, and in North Carolina. And um, they now to this day have a council or a system of food councils that are local, state, and then regional. And they're, they're linked upwards in more or less the way that Gerard was talking about. And um, the councils will consist of everybody that's in the food system, trucking companies, grocery stores, food banks, uh, welfare agencies, blah, 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 farmers. And uh, they are, trying to do the, what collective impact says you're supposed to do, coordinate activities, have common measurement and all that kind of thing. So the idea of governing through uh, structured networks and those councils making decisions by consent um, uh, seems to work. Uh, I know Tracy has been working on this in, in other places. I was just talking with her about the the collective impact network that they've they're constructing in Alaska to try to control the drinking problem in Alaska and you know connecting remote villages and all that together and so there's 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 a lot to it and it you know is working and the collective impact structures without consent are, are running all around and not that they're not successful they seem to be more successful if the councils are making decisions by consent um, um, the, so that's another, another idea that's related of a way to be uh, alternatively constructing society uh, rather than the, 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 what they put together in the 1700s. Um, the, you, you were saying that I was, you know, um, I've gone beyond sociocracy in some ways. The, the, the book I wrote with you to Eckstein, the, uh, company-wide agility with um, beyond budgeting, open space, and sociocracy is it combines those four methodologies. We've changed it around a little bit, and we call it Bossa Nova now with you know beyond budgeting, sociocracy, open space, agile uh, as a dance. So how do we dance society? Um, the um, um, they're, they're really the, the, what this does is it provides a broader conceptual framework to, as a source of um, rapid prototyping hypotheses. So what we're saying is this, there's this, you, you can, we, we made a table one time and we said, all right, if you speak agile, you could describe everything that, that beyond budgeting, open space and sociocracy do. You could, you know, you could describe it in agile terms. You can go in there and put your beyond budgeting hat on and you can describe agile sociocracy and beyond budgeting terms. And each way you say it points out different things and their different strengths. So, so the, the overlapping frameworks of these methodologies, all of which are being used to run companies is what we said, hey, you need to put this together. But the important thing is, is it provides a conceptual framework that lets you try hypotheses, come up with hypotheses and do lots of safe to fail experiments because we also really don't know uh, what, you know, what, how it is we, we come up with a, a, a better way of, of running the planet. Um, and yeah, I could, I could scare everybody, Lorene, showing you that thing that I showed the other day you know, the world of meter. I mean, I can pull it up if you want me to fairly quickly. I think I'll do a share screen. 
This is where I started going to get my coronavirus updates. And then I noticed they've got some other interesting things. The net population growth this year, you can see it right here. There's 65 million more people this year. And then the year is not out than there was at the beginning of the year, despite the, the, you know, the COVID crisis. Um, so the world population is, is going up like this, 7 billion and counting. And just to um, get even more scary uh, in the environment, this is the number of hectares, and hectare is five US type acres, that this year have turned into desert. 9.6 million hectares have turned to desert at the same time that the population is exploding. Uh, some really sobering things. The number of people who died from hunger today is 13,000. That's today, died of hunger. There's almost a billion people who are undernourished in the world. And there are, there are 15,000 days till we end, run out of oil, 43 years till we're out of oil. So it's like, you know how the, um, the, the coronavirus started with a, this report out of China, there was a few people infected and then, oh, there was a cruise ship. And it's like, we're almost getting beyond that point with the environment and it's about to overwhelm us. You can see the numbers. It's like, there's not much more space and we're, we're already having people die from hunger and we're losing, you know, 9 million hectares of land to desert this year. So it's like, there ain't much time to avoid a huge crisis where mother nature is just gonna say, I've had it with you people. You're half of you are gonna die until we get this fixed. And so the COVID thing is just the, the shot across the bow. We've got to get this under control and the current government systems are not able to do it. They just aren't able to do it. So we have to get the government source coming from a different place and we have to do it now. Yes. I'm, I'm just leaning into what you're saying, but the level of complexity that we've set in motion and our ability to manage that, it's right. just, there. We're, it's such a big mismatch. And, and I think we're all like almost immobilized because we don't know and so, I mean, to me, sociocracy ultimately is around collective decision making. The multi mind, you know, Don, you speak so much mm -hmm. to the multi mind and how you know a group is smarter than a smart, group, you know, a, a well functioning group is smarter than its smartest member. So, just how do we enable this capacity? Yeah, and and there and earlier before recording, you and I were just talking about like how people link geographically, but also this thing of how people come together in communities that are not geographic and but just yeah, that seems to be happening. Yeah, with the yeah. the blockchain system, I think that it could well be the basis of a new governance system. Yeah, because you know, it'll be nation states um, that are are not tied down by geography. Yeah, yeah. Um, so a time of great so change. I, yeah, <laughs> I don't know. I mean, that's one possible way. It's that it's another strategy besides collective impact and besides, you know, linking things together. We have to be able to do the really tough stuff, like get population control, you know, population growth under control, yeah. and get the huge amounts of money that are being spent on armies under control, and and the and deal with these. The tendency, the, the for probably good evolutionary reason, reasons, um, the powerful personalities tend to rise to the top of leadership, and they don't do that very well anymore. They're, they're, that's not what we need. We need people, everybody governing things. Yes. And yeah. um, there, there's, there's just, you know, we're we're in big trouble. Yeah. I think what you're pointing out that I would just want to amplify is that like in the old world where things were more predictable, that like really decisive leader 
was well matched. Yeah. But nowadays, no one knows. Like you said earlier, like we just no one knows the answers, and so we need people like leaders, like instead of heroes. I know the answer to leaders as host, and just like how do we get the multi mind, the diversity of people to come together and think things through and and rapidly prototype hypotheses. Like I love what you're talking about. Like we all have to get experimental together. No one knows. But how do we work together to learn together fast? If you've ever been in a neighborhood where there's an emergency happening, whatever it is, a fire, um, you know, rioting happening, whatever it is, uh, everybody will get together and it's all either together and they're, you know, they're handling it. And uh, we're able to do that. And the emergency is, is, is there. You can, you can literally smell the smoke of the emergency. Yes. And it's time to, it's time to everybody pitch in to see if we can solve this. Yes, yes. So John, like this was a wonderful um, shining a flashlight in a direction, like, wait a second, there's more to even just even sociocracy, like there's more here. And then also by the end, you know, you were linking it to, um, you know, beyond budgeting, open space and agile, but that together, um, something like their complementary components that are stronger together. And even with collective impact, like I do think a lot of these things actually go together and enable us to manage the complexity better together. So I have a feeling this is just the beginning of more mm -hmm. conversations around this, mm -hmm. but thank you for um, always being out in front, John, like you were the one who was out in front sniffing, like there's got to be a way, you know, democracy, there's has to be another way and finding sociocracy mm -hmm. and bringing it to America and, and calling attention to it for so long. And I think you're out in front right now and saying like sociocracy is amazing and it goes really well with this. And when you look through these different lenses, I think, you know, with Matthew McNatt, we've talked about, um, almost like a mind shift, lens shifting. What did you, do you remember the word that you used that ability to rapidly shift lenses? Oh, um, um, I don't know. It's, it's like you see it in transformative learning where you shift mindsets. <clears throat> you shift the framework you're using to look at things. Framework shifting. Yes. Yeah. I think that's really, John, where you're getting I, out. Right I, I, I can give you an example of that. Yeah. Of, of why that's important. One of the exercises, Sizes I use when I'm teaching and people can be together without masks and all that kind of stuff <clears throat> is to have people stand in rows and I have them, you know, step. I, I say, everybody take a step to the right and everybody can take a step to the right. And <clears throat> I show them that I, with one command, can move everything very, very precisely. And that, but that's the military way of doing it. What happens if we go into a circle structure and I have each, each line of people then kind of the, the back comes around to the front and we end up with uh, circles and we have an inner circle where the, the head of the line and the back of the line are together. And, and so it's like you can draw like a flower diagram. And then I have everybody hold hands around and we step back and we say, oh, we're actually in a great big circle. And then I say, what happens if I say everybody take a right step to the right or a step to the left? And it's like, you can't, you can't tell a circle what to do. You can't, in, a, in an easy statement, say what to do. But if you shift the framework and say, everybody see where the sun is, that's, that's the south. And over here's the north. There's the east and the west. Now everybody take a step to the east and everybody can do it. So in order to get everybody together, you have to shift the framework. Yes. You give it a new framework and we, we need that new framework in order to deal with the crisis that's coming. Yes, yes, and, I have a- yeah. you, Sorry, just one other thing. Yeah. I, you, thank you for the compliment of, you know, hey, I, I brought sociocracy to America and everything. What I'm now saying is that I did that in, not in a crisis situation and we now have a crisis. Mm. We have to act now. Or we end up with a mess like COVID. You know, it's like it's coming. You can see it's coming. Yeah. And we yes. have to act now. Yes. Especially, yeah, the doubling pattern and how, like, when something's going exponential, yeah, the time to act is actually less. It's deceptive than explosive. So the time right. to act, it's not linear. <laughs> right. And, and we don't know exactly what to do. And so we have to be experimenting together. We have to have just doing all the rapid prototyping we can do. Yes. to see what is it that will, will allow us to cope. Yes. 
What I wanted to say earlier, just because it feels very relevant, but Chris Carr, again, from Art of Hosting is a mentor of mine. Mm -hmm. And we were just talking a lot about polarities and whenever people are locked. And I just would say in society right now, there's such polarization. And he just kind of names that like to, um, then there's a third, like there's a question you know, when there's a polarity, most people are saying, I know the answer, I know the answer. And they're locked in like the more, the more, yeah. you know, versus actually uh, there's another frame. So that thing about like the frame that's outside it, we're actually, you know, we've got to discover the answer together where we come in as learning and experimenting together. I mean, that to me, I think is very much what this, this next thing is like, what is like bringing questions that we don't, none of us have the answers to. And, and exploring together. So I love all the pieces you put in this container, John. And let's just have more conversations around this okay, topic. Okay, great. Thank you.